Okay. Okay, first, uh, as we know, that when we use GitHub, we, when we use uh, other uh, software systems, we know that uh, software systems are constantly changing, right? So we, for example, uh, look at the, uh, the history of the IntelliJ repository, we, 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 we can see that there are multiple versions. There are new versions created to handle software changes. And also, each version uh, usually have uh, multiple uh, revisions or commits that are used to maintain and manage the system. Okay. And let's look at a, a, a more concrete example here. This is a versions, these are the versions of a, of a accounting software package. So here, so what we are looking at a linear evolution model. Uh, so we first we look at uh, these two rows. So the first row shows the timeline. The second row shows the versions of one document. As for other documents, it's similar. We just here we look at one document. Uh, we see as a time evolve, we may have multiple. We may have different versions. Uh, so, but usually is only one new software configuration version replace the former older version. So here we call it a linear evolution model because it's a only one version replace the older version of the same document or code or other artifact, okay? We can also see that within a system, within a whole system, uh, different um, documents or code or other artifacts that may have different uh, versions, right? Okay. So whenever you have questions, please uh, raise your hand or post it on Slack, okay? I, so usually we, we see a more complicated situation. There's a, not just one version. For example, for Microsoft uh, Windows. Uh, so there may be multiple versions uh, in the market for users to use. For example, we have seen that Windows 7, uh, Windows 8, and uh, Windows 10 may be used by different users at the same time, right? So there are several versions of the same system. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, a more concrete example here. Let's look at uh, also these two lines. The first, the first row shows the timeline. The second row shows uh, the version of one document, okay? I, so we see that uh, first, we, for this document, we have uh, a, a initial version, but I, as time goes on, we have uh, two different versions so which are derived from the initial version. Like the version uh, 2.0 is derived from the version 1.0. The ver version 11.4 is also derived from 1.0. So it's not a linear model anymore because we have two versions derived from the one version, right? So it's a tree based, it's like a tree, right? So we call it a tree evolution model. So there are one or more new versions replace the former version, okay? So this is a, a tree evolution model, okay? So let's look at another example of multiple version system, okay? Uh, this is uh, very typical in the software development process. So first of all, we see three main versions, right? Version one, version two, and version three. And we also see other versions like a V.1.0, V1.1. And uh, we see other versions, the R1.0, R1.1. What are those, right? Let's look at uh, a, a classification. Uh, first, we have uh, uh, the main version, we, we, we also call them development versions. So we add new features, we do development mainly on these main versions, okay? So these are the main, main line of our code. So we have version 1.123, right? Then 
at one point, we may want to release a product, release a product version based on current code, right? So we, 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 for example, for version one, we want to release it. And so we, we have a first release, pre-release version, V1.0. Then we'll have another uh, version, V1.1. There are some changes between these versions until uh, V1.3. At this moment, we want to actually, we think the software is already mature to release. So we release it to the market. So we have a release version, R1.0. So this is a release version. Similarly for version two, we can have uh, pre-release versions, also release versions. Okay, so, so as you can see that it's a, it's a tree-based model, right? So there are multiple versions uh, during active development. Okay. And also we can see that uh, uh, during the development uh, of uh, version three, we still have an uh, active development, development of version one. That's possible, okay. Uh, okay, so this is why we need a configuration management. What is configuration management? Uh, so, or configuration configuration management is uh, short as a CM or SCM software configuration management. So, SCM is concerned with uh, the policies, processes, and tools for managing changing software systems because software systems are constantly changing. So, we need uh, configuration management. So we, we use configuration management to, to, to track what has, what has been changed and the, the versions of each component or um, which component, which versions of which component has been integrated to the system. So it's a management of a multiple version, a management of the changes, okay? Uh, so uh, in detail, so there are many four uh, components in configuration management or for activities. The first one is a uh, version management. I, so you can think about a uh, version control like Git as a subversion, right? Uh, so this, this version management keeps track of the multiple versions of, uh, a system of system components. Okay, we have a change management. So this is to keep track of uh, requests for changes to determine which request will lead to code changes. Okay, so you can think about uh, things like an uh, um, issue track system, and a bug report system, right? So you, you have those systems to track the changes, uh, sorry, to manage the changes. Um, and then we have a system building activity. So this is uh, the process of uh, build your source code your documentation, your libraries, your data together into a software system, which is like to combine everything together to be a runnable software system to be used by users. Okay, the last part is a release management. So after we, we build the whole system, so we want to deliver our product to our customers, or we want to deliver our service to our customers. That is, that is the concern of a release management, okay? I, so I, so this figure basically summarizes uh, what is contained in software configuration management. So we have a uh, component versions, we have system versions, we have different system releases. And the first version management will, will take care of, uh, uh, will be concerned with uh, component versions and the system versions, right? So we manage the, the different versions, different changes to this components and the system. And the system building also is a uh, um, concern with the component versions and system versions because we want to build components systems into programs. Okay, and we have change management and release management. This, these two are concerned with the uh, system versions and system releases. Okay, yeah, I okay. So what is a what is a place I of software configuration management in our SQA system, right? So, so software configuration management is part of a quality infrastructure component. Okay, so you can see that this is a, it's a CDA, it's situation in the, the whole SQA system, okay? Okay, this is the introduction. So today we will cover uh, basically the four 
components of uh, software configuration, configuration management. Um, the first one is uh, version management. The second we'll cover change management. Then we will discuss uh, uh, system building and the release management. We discuss them together. Okay. So there are these are there are some references. I uh, first of all we have the book, two books. Uh, you can use other book, uh, book of Galing, book book of, of uh, Galing eighteen or or, four, or 2004. They basically they, they are very similar. Okay. Uh, so you can re refer to the separate chapters for so configuration management. Also, there's another book. Uh, it's not a reference book of our course, but um, yeah, it describes, describes software configuration management very, very nice and in detail. So that is uh, the famous book uh, about software engineering by Ian Somerville, okay? Let's look at our first topic, version management. Uh, so first of all, we have a definition of a version management. So version management is a process of keeping track of different versions of a software component or configuring items. And also we keep track of uh, uh, the systems in which these components are used. Okay. Also we want to ensure that uh, the changes made by different developers do not interfere with each other, okay? This is a version management definition. Let's look at how it works. First, we want to um, want, want to have some basic uh, definition of uh, code line and baselines because uh, uh, because version management can be thought of as a process of managing code lines and baselines. Let's look at what is a code line and what is a baseline. Okay, I a code line is a sequence of versions of uh, software code or other components uh, with the later versions in a sequence derived from the earlier mm -hmm. versions. For example, we look at uh, the figure on the right, the first row, we see a code line for component A, right? So we first, we have a, a A1.1, well, A1.2, A1.3. So this is a sequence of different versions of this component. Right, so each version, each later version is derived from earlier version. So that is a, a code line for a component A. We have a code line for component B, code line for component C, and we have code line for libraries and external components as well. So code lines normally apply to components of the system, not the entire system, but components of the system. So what is a, a baseline, right? So baseline is a, definition of a specific system. Basically, it describes the component versions that are included in the system, plus the specification of the libraries used, configuring files, etc. cetera, okay? All right. So here we, we see a two baseline on the right. The first baseline we see for each component, we have a version, right? And for the baseline V2, for each component we have an, another set of version. So um, basically, a baseline you can consider as, a, as, as one version of the whole system and each individual component of this version of the system are picked from the code lines of different components. Okay, basically you can consider it as a, a combination of different versions of uh, components. For example, when you are talking about, uh, for example, when talking about the OpenMRS 2.09 version, you're talking about a baseline, right? But each individual module or other components may be from different code line versions, okay? So in summary, a sequence of baselines represent different versions of the system. We have V1, V2 here, okay? So here we see the examples of uh, code lines, baselines, so we put them together, okay? Let's have a look on the left, it's a code line, and the right are the baselines, okay? The code lines are for individual components, the baselines are for the whole system. So, so these are the uh, 
uh, code runs baselines and uh, what, so the main job of uh, version management, but what other tools we, we use to, for version management? So basically we use a version control systems uh, or VCS. So, so the, those systems identify store and control access to different versions of components. Okay, the two types of modern, modern version control systems. The first type is a centralized systems. Uh, for centralized systems, so there's a single master repository that maintains everything. Okay, uh, you can think about the example of subversion, SVN, right? The second type is a distributed systems. So there are multiple versions of a components repository exist at the same time. Uh, so you, you can think about the example is a Git, right? So let's look at uh, them in detail later, okay? So, but first we want to look at uh, what are the key features of version control systems? So what are our main jobs they need to do, right? The first thing is uh, they need to keep uh, identification of versions and releases. We have different versions and we have different releases. We need to identify them. For example, this version is 1.1, .1, next version is 1.2. For each component, for each file, we want to know which version it is. This is that is a identification. Second is change history recording. So we want to record the whole history of the changes. And we, we, we need to be able to recover to one point in the history. Okay. Third thing is support for independent development. So we will allow different developers or different practitioners to do their job at the same time. They can edit different files at the same time. They can edit the same file at the different at the same time. Okay. Next is project support. Uh, so those different versions can be used by different projects. Okay. Different projects can share the same components. The last thing is uh sorry. The last one is a uh, storage management. So we want to keep a track of uh, all the history. For example, uh, a, a large large scale systems of, uh, of uh, a rich history may include like tens of thousands of uh, commits or even a, a millions of commits or revisions. If you want to record everything, record full history, so it may use a lot a lot of uh, storage space, right? So. So we want to have an efficient storage mechanism, okay? So uh, there's a one, one, one concept I want to know like, uh, about uh, that, is, uh, uh, that, is, that is to support the mechanism of a uh, version control system. That is a uh, public repository and private workspaces. So, the public repository maintains the master version or the main version of all the components. Okay, so we can think about uh, a Git repository, right? In, in, in GitHub, for example, that's a public repository. Uh, then what is a private uh, workspace, right? So we, so for example, uh, in GitHub, we, we clone a, a repository to our local computer. So this this one, this local version is a, a private workspace. We do changes and the way we do some other manipulations on this private workspace within this work, private workspace, right? So when we finish things in our private workspace, we wa may want to we may want to uh, return our Updated version to the public repository. So, or checking our changes back to the public repository. Right? That's the definition of public repository and private workspaces. We have two types of uh, version control systems. So, one type, first type is a centralized version control. So, it's one example of subversion, for example. Uh, in centralized version control, we check out components from 
So each developer will check out the components from a public repository and save in our private workspace and work on these copies. When the changes are complete, we check in the component, components back to the repository. But there's, there's only one central, uh, there's only one central repository. Sometimes, so usually we only change part of the code into our workspace and work on that and change, and checking, check it back in to the repository. That is a centralized version control. We do check, in, check out checking. We cannot do commit in our local repository in this case, right? We only have one version control repository. Uh, this is how it works for the centralized repository, right? Or centralized version control. We we'll have a check in, check out mechanism. So, first, we have a version management system or our repository at the bottom. We have a different components for each component. We have uh, the versions, right? And we have two developers, Alice and Bob. So, Alice will check out a subset of the components. Bob will check, check out another subset of the components. And then they make their individual changes to these subsets. Then they check in or return the changes back to a central repository. That is a check in, check out uh, mechanism. Okay. That is about the, the centralized uh, version control. The second tab is a distributed version control. Similarly, there's a master repository on our server, which is a public uh, repository. Public repository maintains the code produced by the whole development team, right? Um, so instead of checking out the files that they need, actually a developer would create a clone of the project repository and download the clone. The clone is a complete, um, copy of the, of the master repository, okay? Then the developers work on the files on their local repository, which is a complete copy of the master repository and they make changes. And then, then can, they can submit their revisions or commit their changes in the local repository. At the end, at some stage, maybe after some commits, they want to uh, return all their changes back to the central repository, or they want to make the central repository synchronized with their local repository. They do a push, they push their changes back to the central one. Okay, so there are multiple repositories. Let's look at this example. There's a master repository that different components with different versions. To develop Alice and Bob, they would clone this, repo this repository to have their individual repositories. So each one is a complete copy of the master repository. Okay, that is um, the brief um, illustration of the distributed uh, version control, right? right? So, so which one should we use? Currently, most people would use um, a distributed version control. Why? Like what's the, what are the benefits? First one, it provides a backup mechanism for the repository because there are multiple repositories. If one failed, so each developers, they still have their local versions. So this is a backup mechanism. Also it allows for offline working because you have your local repository in your, on your laptop, for example, so you can do your changes on your laptop locally and you can make changes, you can do commits. You can keep record whole history because you have a full repository on your local works in your local workspace, right? And you can do your testing, compiling within your local repository without uh, using, uh, without uh, interfering with other developers. So these are benefits of distributed version control. So what, what are used typically in, in open source development? 
because open source development is a, is a very important part in current software development. If you look at uh, those commercial systems like Facebook, like Amazon Web Service, like Inkling, actually they, they have lots of, uh, they use lots of uh, open source packages. And uh, also they have uh, many developers who are contributing to the open source packages. So let's look at how it works in the open source community, right? First, distributed version control is essential for open source development. S several, people may, several people may may be working simu simultaneously on, their, on the same system without a central coordination. They have a private repositories and they also usually maintain a public server repository. They maintain separate public repository. So basically the forked repositories. And uh, they, they do changes locally and then push their changes to their own public repository. And I want some stage, they finish some maybe complete features or enhancement. So they want to pull their changes to the initial repository to the original repository. So the original reporter may take their changes. Okay, let's look at how it works. In this example, first on the, on the upper left, we have a definitive project repository. This is a, this is a central, central repository or like a original repository. So two developers, or the owner of this repository is Charlie, right? So Charlie maintains a private repository of this central one, but he is also managing this central repository. Two open source developers, Alice and Bob, so they want to work on this project. They want to make some changes. So they, so they what they do, right? So they clone this uh, definitive project repository. So they have the private repository. Then they make changes locally. Then they push the changes to their own public repository. They don't push the changes to the original one. They push their changes to their own public repository. That's the third step. And finally, a Charlie may examine the changes in Alice and Bob's public repository. If there's something beneficial that the Charlie want to integrate to the original project repository, he may approve the pull request from Alice and Bob and then take the changes and integrate them into the definitive project repository. Okay. That is how, how it works uh, in open source development using distributed version control. Okay. So next. I, so, so we want to uh, know what is uh, essential in such a, a collaboration in distributed or centralized version, version control, right? So we have two important concepts. One is branching, one is merging. The branching is because usually we, 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 we have a more than a linear sequence. We have a, a tree-based evolution, so branching Branching is uh, uh, to have uh, multiple versions derived from the same version. That's branching, right? What is merge? At some point, you have, uh, you, you have different uh, branches. At some point, you want to uh, make them synchronized with, into a single uh, version. So you want to merge them together, right? That's a, that is a merging. Let's look at one example here. Initially, we have uh, the, the lower right part, this box, we have uh, the version one, V1.0 as our initial version. So then we have a V1.1, which is enhancement to initial version. Then at this point, so developers, they want to develop the, the, this, this software system separately. They have two branches. So one branch continues to V1.2, another branch, they want to develop a, a completely different set of features. 
So they have a, a V2.0 version. Then the, 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 they have a next version of V2.1 and then branch to two and up to other versions. At one point, they merge together into the next version, V2.4. So this branch, this branch uh, code line 2.1 is usually they want to just develop some enhancement or small features. So they want to have a new branch and then want, then they want to integrate their enhancement back to the main, main branch. So we merge it together. That, so this is a definition of branching and merging. Okay. So there are uh, some techniques within branch and merging. We, we don't want to go to details. If you're interested, so there are lots of resources about branching and the um, merging. Okay. As we mentioned, uh, so we keep the whole record of the, the system, right? So how we can make sure we, we can manage them with efficient uh, storage uh, overhead. So traditionally, so the versions are managed using something called a, a, a delta. So, so delta compression or, or they just uh, store a list of differences between one version to another. So they store differences only because the differences are usually smaller than the original uh, artifacts. So they store the difference to make it smaller. Okay. The drawback is that because every time you want to recover back to uh, some point in the history, you need to um, reconstruct the, the whole line with the deltas. For example, uh, so you're currently at the v, V5 version and you want to return back to V2, right? So you need to first construct V4 using the delta between V4 and v, V5, then store a diff, then recover to V3, then recover V2. So it takes lots of time, right? So this is a drawback, it can take a long time, okay? Okay, um, so this is this one, this figure illustrates how it works uh, with uh, the Delta um, storage. Okay, like uh, we can see that uh, we have uh, different versions and we store the Delta. So we want to return back to our original version. We apply this Delta, right? It can be very slow. Uh, so what is a, uh, okay, uh, so what is a, uh, a different approach. What is, for example, what is used in, in Git, right? So Git uses a different, faster approach. It doesn't use uh, deltas, but it instead applies standard compression algorithm to store files and associated with the meta information. So when we want to retrieve a, 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 a version, we just de decompress it, right? And also make sure it doesn't uh, store duplicate copies of files. Because the different versions, uh, they share a lot of uh, common information. So different versions, they have a lot of things that are the same, right? So when you compress them, you can have a very high compression ratio. You can compress uh, the whole repository into a very small package, okay? So next, uh, I, how we do branching, how we do versioning of these different software re releases. So we went, for example, if you're using a, a operating system, for example, a, a micro OS, so you look at the about section part, you see there's a version number, for example, 10.15.3, right? So what do this number mean? So actually this is a versioning of the software release, right? Let's look at some best practices and best practices. Uh, a good example is a uh, Firefox, right? You can see they have a, a similar branching uh, a versioning mechanism with uh, the Mac OS. But uh, what is a bad example? For example, Microsoft Windows. So how Mac Microsoft Windows 
uh, count the versions from one to 10, right? So you have one, two, three, then 95, 98, NT, 2000, XP, Vista, seven, eight, 10. So that's a, a bad practice for using version, okay? So what does the, what does each number in the version mean, right? So you can see here, so typically, so in this three number versioning mechanism, the first number is a major major version. You make a major changes to your system your, or your API. The second number is a, is a minor version. So you make a minor versions to your, to your API or system. Those minor versions are just usually to, to do some small improvement to your, your, your major versions. And the last one is uh, we call it patches. Patches are usually used to fix some issues, fix some bugs. Okay, so we have this three number versioning mechanism. Okay, so I, so let me take some questions from, from Slack and from, from chat. I'm not, are you there? Yeah, so they are concerned to make sure that the Git stores a Delta version too. Uh, can you repeat that one? Sure. Uh, they have concern that whether Git stores a Delta version. No, Git. Uh, I think Git use, uh, uses uh, a compression mechanism. Okay. okay. Do we have uh, other questions here? I saw something like uh, um, from from room chat. Do you have questions from room chat? No. Okay. 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 So next, uh, let's look at the second part. Uh, change management. This is the second part of. Uh, Software configuration management. Okay, I uh, we know that uh, software systems are constantly changing. I uh, so for example, organization needs a uh, may change requirement may change, right? And we want to, we may need to fix some bugs, so we may need to some ch make some changes to adapt to the environment. For example, a Java version already changed, we need to make some changes to adapt a newer Java version, right? There are other changes as well. So how to manage these changes? So how to decide uh, which change should be implemented? So we have something called change management. So change management is intended to ensure that the system evolution is managed, it's a managed process and the priority is given to the most urgent and cost effective changes. So we have different tool support for change management. First one is a, a simple issue bug tracking systems. For open source systems, we can see Jira, Bugzilla, they are the system to managing changes, right? To track the changes. And also there are commercial commercial systems like IBM, IBM Rational Clear case, okay? So how it works, what is the change management, management process? All right, so here, this is how it works. Okay, first, the customer, either customer or customer support team will make a change, a change request. So customers can make it. If a customer are not involved in the decisions, customer support team, support team may submit the change request. So the change request basically they describe what they want to be changed. For example, they need a new feature. They may describe the new feature in their change request. However, not all the change requests will be accepted or implemented. The change first will go to change request will go to a. Uh, uh, you will go to a, a a board called change control board. This board will access, will assess the benefits and costs of the changes. 
and they also they will prioritize the change request. For example, they will have a as a result they will select some change request to be implemented to be accepted, while others will be uh, discarded or even waiting list. Okay. And then developers will modify the soft the software to apply the changes to add the new features and then we'll test it. Okay. That is, uh, this is uh, generally the whole process. Let's look at, a, a, for example, one example. So about a change request, okay. So in this change request, so here we see that what is a project, what is the number of the change request, and the uh, request change, description of the request change, the status of applications should be shown visually in the display the list of applications. This, this change request is asking for a new feature, right? Then someone will be analyzing the change request, right? So then the CCB, the change, uh, uh, con change request control board will make an assessment. For example, here the assess assessment is, it's, it is relatively simple to implement by changing the display color according to a status. So because it's simple, the, the cost is, 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 is small, so they want to accept this change request and they assign a priority medium and other information. So then this change request will be implemented by developers. So this is a, a example of a change request. Okay, so we know that not every change request will be implemented. Um, change request may be accepted or rejected. That's right. So what are the factors that can influence the decision of accepting or rejecting a change? The different factors. The first factor, for example, is the consequences of not making the change. If you don't make the change, you may have some bad consequences. You need to consider that. Or the benefit of a change. Or the number of users are affected by the change. Right? There are other benefits and costs that can be that should be assessed before accepting or rejecting a change. Okay. So there's a, in the open source community, typically there's a, a, a form of change, change request, which is a, a pull request. So most of you already know pull request maybe. All right, so pull request is a collaboration model of a distributed, distributed development, especially used in open source development. So, so there's a contributor, right? An integrator, contributors who make change code changes, integrators who want to integrate the code changes into a central repository. So first, uh, the contributor applies changes to its copy and submit the proposal for a review. That is a pull request. So the integrator evaluates the contributions, reviews and the submitted code and discusses with the contributors. Then there may be multiple exchanges between the integrator and the contributor. Okay. So the integrator's responsibility is to review the pull request and maintain the quality of the, the project. So from this figure, you can see that um, here, at a, there's a, a main branch at some point, like someone will clone or make another repository and they make some change, they changes, then they make a pull request. So this pull request will be um, reviewed by the integrator and there may be some discussions, then this progress may be integrated to the mainstream, okay. So there are some statistics about pull request, right? Uh, for example, uh, so, so when are pull requests used, overall usage can be uh, distributed to different types. First one is to perform code review. Uh, in open source development, especially, um, so people may use, uh, pull request to the code review. If your code is good, I accept this pull request. If not, not good, you may need some change. So I only accept it after you make those changes. Another thing is to solve problems. Uh, some, some open source developers, they may um, make some changes to, to fix a bug, for example. Then they make a pull request. The integrator may accept this pull request that fix those bugs. Okay or to solicit new contributions, right? So you want other people to have the contributions to this open source project. 
So other people may, so you actually you use uh, the pull request mechanism to have those, to solicit such contributions, okay. So there are other statistics, I don't want to go to detail. And I think we, we, we can have a break and uh, let's have a break for, um, what's the time now? I think it's uh, it's a 2.36, let's have a break until 2.50, uh, sorry, like nine minutes, 2.45, okay. Let's have a break until 2.45. I'll see you at 2.45, okay. Uh, before I break, do we have any other questions? Okay. Uh, no. Okay, yeah. see, see you later. Yes, sorry, I have questions. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, can, can we have the... Uh...